Both of them are functions, so we can sketch it. Um, y equals y root of x is going to go that way. Yes? And y equals y root of 1 minus x. It's just a shifted version. Agree? So instead of starting at 0, it is going to start at 1 and go that way. Yes? Probably that. Good. Approximate picture. Now, if you do the reflection, you've got one side here, another side over there. Yes? No. Why not? It doesn't look like that. One minus x, one minus x. You're purple one. Is that even? Wait, why is not purple one incorrect? Just because it's a negative. It goes, how does that even work? Negative. That's, that one. <laughs> Went the wrong direction. Um, zero. Um, now you've got two choices. Which one should we pick? Well, some of you initially picked this part because, sure, it is an enclosed area, but is it really enclosed though? It is not. Why? This part right here is enclosed. But did I say that it is bounded by um, x equals zero? Did I say that the curve stops? I, I didn't. So this keeps on going. If this keeps on going, do we have a finite area? No. If we don't have a finite area, are we going to have a finite volume? No, so it can't be that. Unless you want to get the problem wrong, it can't be that. So it has to be that part. So that is our reason. Good. Now, um, I don't want to. Oh, well, I guess I can show it. I will try. I'm no artist, but I'm going to try. That is x is equal to 4. Good. We'll set up or we'll start with the integral. This way, we can figure out um, is it going to be y, x, bounds for y, bounds for x, one at a time. So, integral pi. Outer radius squared minus pi inner radius squared. Agreed. What are we integrating with respect to? Spinning it about the line x is equal to 4, which would simply mean this is parallel to that. Agreed. That is the y axis. So it has to be. D one. Okay. Well, this is D Y. The bounds they have to be for D Y. Or simply put, one. Agreed. Okay. Where does Y start? Zero. Zero. Okay. Where does it end? So it starts here. Tell me when. Right there. Good. And what is that value? That value is the point of intersection. If you put it in the calculator, it's one half comma uh, one over square root of two. One over square root of two is nothing but point seven zero seven. Um. Let me so far. Now, what are we supposed to do at this step? Now that we've written everything, draw the draw the strip. Learning finally. So, Outer 
it's the length here one. The other one is this. Uh, the shorter one. Good. Good. I want to find that radius and that radius. If I find those two, I'll be done. That radius is not a fixed value. Do we agree? This is going to change if I move that up and down. Agreed? And the only way for us to connect the radius to this region is using those curves. So somehow, we've got to relate the radius to the curve. Well, arbitrary x. Let's say, to avoid confusion, arbitrary x sub out. Some x value that, uh, that would correspond to the outer curve. Um, arbitrary x value right here. which would correspond to the inner curve. Good? Okay. This is what I have from that picture. I have zero, two X L. Good. And then I have the outer radius. I put them together, I get the total length from zero all the way up to four. Do you agree? Good. If you can't visualize it, basic algebra, x plus r out equals what now? Four. Is it possible to solve for the outer radius? Alison. Yes, so what is it? Four minus X, Four minus X sub out or X out? Great. Same logic. As you move this red strip up and down, it is going to vary with respect to the purple curve. You have zero to x in and x in to four. So this length is x in. That then is R in this plus that equals to a total length of four I want to solve for the inner radius. Good. Let me so far. Next step, oh, let's write the upper limit, one over square root of two, zero. Pi is common to both terms. Uh, four minus x out, entire thing squared, minus, Four minus x in squared. Good. Integrating it with respect to y. Here is another tip. If this is going to shift by four, that has to shift by four. If you see a four here, there has to be a four there to give. Um, easier way to remember. Okay, 
I've got the bounds for y because it's moving up and down. It is dy because it's moving up and down. Um, but whatever I wrote here are in terms of x. Somehow I want to convert them to y. How would I do that? Hannah, what do you mean? Oh, okay. Okay, good. Uh, do you know the answer? Go ahead. Wait. Yeah. What was the question? How do we rewrite it in terms of y? Oh, uh, um, well, the y equals square root x would be x equals y squared, and then that one would be 1 minus y squared. Do we follow that? The same thing. Okay. Um, okay. Since you have R out and R in, and both of them are going to vary with respect to the curves that you have. Our L is going to move back and forth along the green curve. Do you agree? When you sketched it in your calculator, Desmos, whatever, that green curve corresponds to which one here? Square root. Square root of x. So, y out or r out relates to x out. I just want to solve for x out. How do we solve for x out? Um, you want to square it? Square on both sides. y squared equals x out. Back over here, pi integral zero to one over square root of two, four minus y squared squared. Good. I'm just plugging in um, y squared for example. Likewise. As I move this red strip up and down, up to the point of intersection, it is facing out a curve, a curve that I messed up when I first drew. So which curve? The red strip is moving along which point, Alan? The uh, y equals, or x equals negative y squared minus Okay, plus one. Plus one. Okay, it's so over here. So this curve. So y would equal the square root of one minus x in. How do we solve square on both sides? Y squared would equal to one minus x in. We want to solve for x in. X in is simply one minus y squared. Four. As I went around, people didn't listen to me as always. They didn't put parentheses. Minus one minus y squared. Don't put that parentheses. You are going to make a mistake. Good. Okay. I will rewrite that integral over here. Pi zero to one over square root of two, four minus y squared squared, minus four minus one minus y squared squared, d1. Do I have the entire integral written in terms of y? Yes or no? Yes. So everything is in place. All we have to do is integrate it. So great. 
Before we do that, though, just a new simplify that one. And um, four minus one minus times minus plus. So plus y squared and four minus one is three. So three plus y squared squared. Good so far. Yes. Okay. What did we do at this step? Go back up here. I'm still waiting. Foil, okay. So, pi. Simplify it before you start integrating. That's the best way to do it. So if you follow the first expression, you have four minus eight y squared plus y raised four. The second expression minus parentheses nine plus six y squared plus y raised four. DY. Yes. And is that four is supposed to be sixteen? Because oh. we did four times four. Bad enough. Right. Okay. Getting way too excited. Thank you. Um sixteen. Minus nine is seven. Negative eight eight squared minus six y squared. I meant to say eight, eight y squared minus six y squared. Negative fourteen y squared. Y raised four minus y raised four. This is zero. Good. What is the integral of seven? Seven x integrating with respect to y. Seven y. What is the integral of fourteen y squared? Negative fourteen y cubed divided by three zero to one over square root of two. I don't have to worry about um, the denominator, sorry, the lower bound, because y is zero would mean both of them go away. So pi times seven over square root of two, seven over three square root of two, Pi times 14 over square root of 2. Yes? You can put it in decimals. So, 14 pi over square root of 2 is what my mental math is telling me. But oh, okay. So, when I simplify 
Lost. Okay. Yeah, my road, uh, seven over square root of two minus fourteen over um, three root two. I simplified those two, and then I did the common denominator. I forgot that three. It is fourteen pi over three root two. So I forgot that three. Um, so naturally, you would have tried to sketch this using a calculator. Did we make that change in the previous problem? 14 over 3 root 2. 14 pi over 2 root 2. Yes. I don't want you to get confused later. Naturally, your mind would say, oh, I'll go ahead and graph this. Did we graph it? Okay. You, it's probably goes to the right side. Mm, press it on that. It should go that like that. Every the fourth power probably going to go right side. Yes, approximately. As I went around. What? No, I promise we're speaking like inward compared to. It's moved a bit. Is that what you're like, The parabola is too far up. Oh, just... it's too far up. Okay, my bad. Should go this way. Yeah. Not what you're trying to say. Okay. This way. Yep. Perfect. Okay, fine. Oh. Um, as I went around, the number of you take that region and try to spin it around. There is a huge problem with that. What is the issue? It's infinite. Infinite area. It is not enclosed. If you have an infinite area, are you going to get a finite volume? No. So, problem. What are you going to do? Abort mission? Yes. You are not able to see it in your calculator because the value where it intersects is extremely small. The only way you would, you would be able to see it clearly if you zoom in in a really granular manner. Um, perhaps I will show you next time um, to be continued. But in a problem like this, where do you get that insight from? I am looking for a point of intersection to get an enclosed area. Do you agree? Yes. It cannot be over here. Do you agree? It cannot be over there. Do you agree? So, none of that. None of that. We have already established it can't be this. Correct? No. It has to be there. Because I think they're going to accept. What is the easiest way, if possible, as greatly, to find the point of intersection? Set them equal to each other. X raised 4 equals X divided by 3. Yes? They will get cancelled. X equals 1 divided by 3. So the point of intersection. Um, yeah, they cancel. How do they cancel? Can't do it. Come on, Caleb. X cubed over three. Yes. Oh, Divide by X cubed on both sides. X raised four over X cubed equals one over three. Move it up. You don't believe? Yeah, believe oh, X raised four minus three one. If you don't believe me, plug in one one over three here, one over three there, and tell me what you think. You will get one over eighty one. Yes. And one over eighty one is a pretty small number. It's probably zero point zero one. Three something. Point one two. Huh? Zero point one two three four five six seven eight. 
It's not point one. No, it's one over eight. Okay, zero point zero one two something. Right? It's a very tiny number. So you've got to zoom in really to get to that point. Well, do you really want to do it using a calculator? Well, you can. I'll show you how long, um, how to do it next time. Um, but I wouldn't rely on the calculator. You can waste it. Um, I want you to set this up. Uh, do just this set up. Find the volume if you can. I'm going to finish this problem and I'll start method of thing called shelves.